All right, welcome to chapter eight of Basics of Biblical Hebrew. This evening, we are going to, instead of looking at modern Hebrew, we're going to be looking at um, the Torah, the uh, five books of Moses, the law, Torah means law. And uh, we're going to look at the names that they, well, I guess it's kind of, kind of modern Hebrew in a way that, uh, in that these are the names, they, we know them as Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. We're going to look at the Hebrew side of that. Um, we'll look, see if there's anybody has any questions on the workbook. Uh, we'll look at um, translations in the workbook. Chapter 8 is pronouns. We'll be looking at pronouns. There's uh, four different kinds of pronouns we'll be looking at. And then we'll go over the vocabulary. So starting with the Torah, there's how you spell it in Hebrew. And it means law. And so we have Genesis 1-1, the first verse here. Bereshit, bara, Elohim, eight, hashemaim, eight, haaretz. And the very first word, bereshit, that's what they call Genesis in Hebrew. They, they don't, there's, in the beginning, that's the, uh, that's the name of the book, in the beginning. For Exodus, we have, and these are the names of the sons of Israel, the ones going into Egypt word, entering into Egypt. Um, here's the directional hay there. Egypt word meets rhyme is Egypt. Um, and so for Exodus, Shemot is the name. That's the short name. The whole name would be Ele Shemot or Ve Shemot. And these are the names. Or you can just say, uh, names, and that's what they call the book of Exodus, taken from the first verse. Leviticus, Vayikra, and he called, he call, and he called to Moses, and he called to Moses, and he said, Yahweh, good verb, subject, word order, pretty typical in Hebrew, uh, and he said, who said it? It was Yahweh that said it, um, or and he spoke, and he spoke Yahweh to him, from the tent of meeting to say, and then the next verse goes on to what he said. But for the book of Leviticus, they use the first word, Vayikra, Vayikra. And he called. So that's the name of the book in Hebrew. Numbers. And he spoke Yahweh. Here again, we have the verb and the subject. So Yahweh spoke to Moshe, the Midbar, in the wilderness of Sinai, Sinai, in the tent of meeting. And so the in the Hebrew, they refer to it as Bamidbar. Bamidbar means um, in the wilderness. And then finally, Deuteronomy. Um, we have the uh, similar word here, Ele, Hadevarim. That is the name. These are the words which he spoke. Moses, which Mo again, we have the verb, then we have the subject, which Moses spoke. Um, to all of Israel on the other side of the Jordan, by Yardane, the Jordan. So the, the, the short name is to call it Hadevarim, or just Devarim, the words. Uh, but sometimes you'll see it listed as the whole thing, Ele Hadevarim, these are the words. And we're going to be studying about Ele, these, and you notice I inserted the word R, these are the words. We'll be looking at why I did that in this lesson. So the five books of Moses, Bereshit, this is what they call Genesis. The Ale Shemot, these are the names. That's what they call Exodus or just Shemot for short. Vayikra, and he called for Leviticus. Bamidbar, in the wilderness for Deuteronomy. And Ale Adevarim, or just Adevarim or Devarim, the words, these are the words. And I did the same thing with this one, Ele up here. I added the word R in it. Um, these and these are the names. Um, again, we'll see in this lesson why I did that. Okay, before we get into the lesson, though, let's uh, see. If, did anybody have any questions from the workbook? This will be for exercise seven.
I have a note here that I just now noticed it. I should have made a slide on it, but I just now noticed it. I have a note here that the number four on page 27, I shouldn't say number four, section four, section four on page 27, uh, I didn't look up to see what the uh, answer key has, but it should say, Aaretz Hatova. Um, and Aaretz Hatova, that'd be the, the land, the good one. That's the good land. And actually, that is the same thing. If you want to see what that looks like, if you look at, at the top of the page on number four, um, you'll, you'll see that they have that. Um, listed above. So that's how you write the good land. But I didn't look to see what the answer key actually had. I don't remember. Yeah, just silence my phone, make sure it doesn't go off. So I hear no questions. So let's go ahead and look at the translations on page 28, section 5. We have... Um, the S uh, the e -S -K, uh the Goy Gadol, and I will make you for a nation a great one. So the for a great nation. I will make you for a great nation. And number two, we have Ish Chacham Maod. Uh, a, so a man, a wise one, very. So we just flip that around, a very wise man for smoother English. And then Tov the Yashar Yahweh. Good and upright Yahweh. Well we'd say since names are definite, we'd say we, you well, you could just say Yahweh, you say the Lord. Depends on whether you which way you want to go on that. The Lord is good and upright, or Yahweh is good and upright. And since Yahweh is definite, we don't have the article on the other two. That's why we know we have to add his. We have to add a to be verb in there. Yahweh is uh, good and upright. Uh, whereas like on um, number two, Ish is not definite and Kacham does not have the article either. So it's a man, a wise one, very. So a wise, a very wise man. Uh, but it's um, the adjective is following the noun. Ish kacham is the adjective following the noun. And in the other case, we have good and upright are the adjectives, and they precede. So we're going to add the word is. And then number four, Elohim acherim, that's uh, other gods. God's other ones, we just in English say other gods. Number five, we start off with an imperative here. Sing to Yahweh a song, a new one. So sing to the Lord or sing to Yahweh a new song. Um, again, we ne neither sheer song or chadash. Uh, chadash is uh, new. Neither one of them have an art. It's not the song, but new. Or it's, it's just a song, a new one. So a new song. Sing to Yahweh a new song. And continuing... Um, Shiru, Le Yahweh, Kol Haaretz, uh, sing to Lord all the earth, or sing to Yahweh all the earth. Any questions? All right, we will move on. Of course, if something comes up later, you can always email me and let, let me know what uh, what your questions are. All right, so we'll start chapter eight, Hebrew pronouns. Learning objectives, we want to understand both English and Hebrew pronouns. We'll be comparing them. This is a refresher on English. Then we want to understand Hebrew independent personal pronouns. And we'll explain what that means. Understand Hebrew demonstratives. That's a different kind of pronoun. Understand Hebrew relative pronoun, a different kind of pronoun. And understand the interrogative pronouns and the Hebrew interrogative particles. That's what's on our plate. So first we'll look at English and Hebrew pronouns. 
A pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. We can say, see the book. All right, no pronouns there. But then if we further comment on, say, it, we are referring to the book. It is read. See the book? It is read. And it is referring to the book. Welcome to the Hebrew class. We, okay, what's the we? It's referring to the Hebrew class. The Hebrew class, the people in the class love to read Hebrew. We love to read Hebrew. The word that a pronoun refers back to, as in, in the first example, see the book, it is read. Uh, and then the people in the class, the class, Hebrew class, uh, referred to by the we, the noun that is referred to is called the antecedent, antecedent. Okay, pronouns in English have person and number. So we have I, and this is all subjective case. We have three cases in English. We have the subjective, the objective, and the possessive. And we'll look at that a little more later, but right now we're just looking at subjective. In other words, this I would be the subject. We would never say me went to the store. Well, not unless... Once we get over about two years old, we don't say that anymore. Me, me go to the store. Me would be objective. I is used for the subject. So I is singular. We is plural, as opposed to us would be objective. Um, you is we use for both singular and plural, unless I've got a footnote here, unless you resort to y'all or to all y'all, or even to the old English thou, which would be singular, and ye would be plural. But most most of the time in English, you're going to just have uh, you or both, singular and plural. And then for third person, we have he, she, it, and then the, for the singulars, and then they for plural. So English pronouns have person and number. And then the third person, we see that they have gender. Masculine, feminine, and neuter. Okay, and there are several kinds of pronouns. A pronoun is a word that replaces a noun. There are personal pronouns, like I, you, he, she, it, that we've been looking at. There's the demonstrative pronouns, this and that. Um, so this is the near demonstrative, and that is the far demonstrative. If you were raised on Sesame Street, you might picture Grover, Mo uh, Grover Monster stepping up close to the camera saying, near, and stepping back away from the camera saying, far, um, near and far. So we have near and far demonstratives, because if I say this table, I'm talking about the one right in front of me. If I say that table, I might be referring to one in a different room or something. So there's demonstrative pronouns, there's relative pronouns, who, that, which, and then there's interrogative pronouns, like who, what, asking a question, interrogative is asking a question. So we'll be looking at all of these. Um, this is the English rep representation of pronouns. So let's look a little bit more at the personal uh, pronouns. English personal pronouns inflect for person, as we talked about. We have first person, I, second person, you, third person, he, she, or it. English personal pronouns inflect for number. So we have singular and plural. We have I and we, you and you, or y'all, or all y'all, and he, she, or it, or they. English personal pronouns some inflect for gender, as we've noticed in the third person. We have masculine, feminine, neuter. Uh, no change for I. I is common between all the genders. You is common between all the genders. But for third person, we have he, she, and it. Masculine, feminine, neuter. English personal pronouns inflect for case. And as I said, there are three cases in English. Uh, we have the subjective, the objective, and the possessive case. So for subjective, if you're going to use, if, if the pronoun is the subject of the sentence, you'll say I, you, he, she, it. If it's the object of the sentence, she gave a card to me. Okay, that's, that's objective. Uh, for me, 
you as still you, she gave a card to you, uh, or she gave a card to him or to her or something else, I guess, it. So that's the objective case. And then the possessive case, we have my, your, and his, her, or its. So the inflect for case. All right, let's look at the Hebrew independent personal pronouns. They're Hebrew independent personal pronouns. Why, why do we call it independent? Because they stand alone. They're not attached to the word itself. Uh, when we get into when we get into the next chapter, we'll be looking at pronominal suffixes, and those are attached to the word. These are independent, and they are personal pronouns, and they inflect for person, gender, and number. And all independent personal pronouns in Hebrew are in the subjective case. They're going to be the subject. If you see it used, it's going to be the subject. Hebrew pronouns in other cases are not independent. They're going to be attached to words, and we will look at them in the next chapter, chapter 9. So Hebrew independent personal pronouns, you need to learn this paradigm. It's on page 67 under 8.3. We have uh, singular and plural. We have first, second, third person. For second and third person, we have both masculine and feminine. The first person is common. And by common, that means that um, ani is going to be the most common. Ani. You can say I. If I'm talking um, or a man, if a man is referring to themselves, they'll say ani. If a woman is talking and they refer to themselves, they'll say ani. So that's why it's common. It uh, doesn't indicate gender. Any gender can use it. And then anochi is another version, but ani is going to be the more common. So that's the common singular for I. And then for masculine second person, we have ata, a you, talking to a man, uh, one man, you'd say ata, you. Uh, in fact, um, you remember last week we looked at Mashlam Cha, how are you? Um, and if, um, if I was talking to another man and I he said, how are you? And I would say something like, Tov, I'm good. Uh, then I would say, Va'ata, and you, Va'ata. Yeah, but if it was a woman talking to me and she asked, and I, she said, how are you? And I said, I'm good. I'd say, Tov. And then I want to ask how she's doing. I say, the ot, the ot, that'd be, and you, ot is the feminine you. And then who is he? <laughs> um, I have a video I'm going to send out a link to when I send out the email. I listed at the end of the lesson as well on confusion with who is he. Uh, if you, for those of you that might be familiar with Abbott and Costello, who's on first, it's kind of written in that vein. And then he is she. So who is he and he is she. Uh, but he, this is, the, this is the way you'll typically see it. He is she. This would still be pronounced he. You can say heave. But uh, you mostly only see this version in the uh, five books of Moses. Once you get past Deuteronomy, you don't see this version after that. Um, but I think, all, well, I'm thinking practically every time it is this version in the in the law, in the Torah. Okay, so look, going back to the plurals, if it's we, again, it's common, whether it's a couple of women talking or whether it's a couple of men talking or whether it's a... Um, uh, yeah, a mixed crowd, you say anachnu, anachnu, that's we. Okay, and then the plural for masculine, you're talking to a group of men, you'd say atem, atem, it's you, or y'all, or all y'all, atem, but it's masculine. Atenu, um, I mean, I'm sorry, atena, atena, uh, that's you, 
plural feminine, it only occurs, I think it's five times. I think I have a note on that here in a little bit. Um, the haim, notice when you have a mem involved and hema, a mem involved, that's masculine. If you put the mem or m sound and think of masculine, uh, that'll help you. Haim, hema, and then that's they. And then for feminine, it's hain with a new and a new on hena. Um, if you think of feminine has more ends than masculine, masculine's only got one, feminine's got two. And if you think of feminine and think of the N sound, the new, the final form new there, um, maybe that'll help you remember that that's feminine. Amen. Ana. And it's also they, but that's referring to a group of women. So there's the independent personal pronouns. And yeah, here's the note on the, the second feminine plural right here. Uh, it's only used five times. And here's the place in Genesis once, Ezekiel, rest of them are Ezekiel, one, two, three, four. So um, it's not very common. All right. So again, Hebrew independent personal pronouns are used as subjects of clauses. For instance, we have a knee, I, walking. So I am, I'm going to put a to be verb in there. I am walking to Hashulchan, the table. I am walking to the table. Uh, but this ani is the subject of the sentence. Doesn't matter whether it's male or female. That's uh, going to be ani. I am walking to the table. So the independent personal pronouns are used as subjects with predicate nominatives. That means the predicate nominative is kind of making an A equals B type of statement. Um, like, um, oh, I just saw one the other day. Oh, I, it was in, I was reading in Greek in 1 John and it said, uh, it said, sin is lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. Or you could say lawlessness is sin. It's... Um, the, the two are interchangeable. Lawlessness is sin. Sin is lawlessness. So the same thing, A is B. That's, a, that's a, a, an example of a predicate nominative when you're saying uh, this A equals B type of grammatical situation. So we have um, an example here. Who? Elohim. Who? Elohim. He, and we're going to have to add is, and that, and why? Because who is first? If this was on this side, we'd probably do something different with it. But uh, he is God. He is God. Uh, the he would be the A, and the God would be B. Uh, there, we're talking about one and the same here. He is God. And here's the flip side of that. Um, now, the reason why this is going to be the same is because he, well, who, uh, who, which means he, uh, does not have an article. There's no article there. Um, and so, but yet God is definite. And so we're still going to say he is God. He is God. Now, if it's had a, an article, if there really was an article standing in here, we might be able to say that God. Uh, but, but we don't have it. All right. Now, the next one. We looked at independent personal pronouns. Now, we're going to look at demonstratives. That's going to be near and far, this and that, as we saw earlier. What's a demonstrative? A demonstrative adds specific, specificity. Specificity. They have safer, a book or scroll. That's just a book. Or we can have a safer. Uh, that's the book. Now we're talking about a specific book. If we say a safer haze, we're talking about this book. This book is even more specific than the book. So it adds another layer of specificity. Here's our article. We have the hay, we have the dog ash, we have the patak. There's the article. 
here's the hay, here's the dog ash, there's the patak. So both of these have it's this um, the article, both of them are definite. Zay means this. We haven't looked at that yet, but we will. This book, Zay, the this. So you want to go real wooden with it, a wooden translation, very literal. When I say wooden, it means like coarse, rough, doesn't make good English translation, but just taking it, for what is this? The book, the this one, but we would just say this book. A demonstrative can be an adjective or a pronoun. As an adjective, we can say this book, the book, the this one, this book. Uh, that book, so this is the near demonstrative, Zay, Zay is the near demonstrative, that book, Hasefer, Ahu, that book, the book, the that one, uh, that book. And notice that it follows, it follows the noun in both cases, follows the noun. Okay, or it can be used as a pronoun. We can say this is the book. When we put ze in front, notice there's no article on the front. There's no article, it's just ze, a safer. So they do not match indefiniteness. And so in this case, we'd add the word is. We have to have a to be verb in there. This is, we do have an article on book though, the book. This is the book. And if we want to go with the far demonstrative, we'd say who a safer that, and we have to add is the book. That is the book. So look at we're going to take a look at the Hebrew demonstratives. Uh, again, you have to learn this paradigm. Uh, we have masculine, feminine, uh, singular, and plural uh, for near and far. So we have ze is masculine, this. Zot is feminine, this. Those are the near demonstrative, the far demonstrative. Who is that? And he is that feminine. So the plural, okay, so the top two are near and the bottom two are far demonstratives. Uh, we'll talk about these two in just a little bit. Who and he. Uh, Ele, we saw that as we were looking at the names of the books of the Torah. These are the words, or uh, um, these are the names. The Ele is these, and it's the same for both masculine and feminine. So we have blue and red here, but they're exactly the same. Um, in your Bible, they're just going to be black anyway, but they're, we have blue here to represent masculine and red for feminine. But they both mean these. Ele, it, it works for either these. And then um, Haim, again, if you think about the Mem and Hema, the Mem and the M on masculine, um, it'll help you remember that Haim and Hema are masculine. And this means those, that's the far demonstrative, those, those over there. You think these over here and those over there uh, to remember the here and uh, near and far. And then it's the same way, Hain and Haina, and the fact that we have more ends in feminine, if that helps you remember. So those feminine. The far demonstratives look exactly like the third person independent pronouns. So, yes. So the far, the, the, the bottom half, those look exactly like the personal pronouns. So how do you know what they are? Well, you look to see where they're placed in conjunction to the noun, and you also look at the context. Okay, so Hebrew demonstratives can act as adjectives. Demonstrative adjectives are attributive adjectives. Um, they follow the nouns they modify. We talked about this a little bit. The book, the this one, which would just be this book. We just say this book. They agree in gender, number, and definiteness. We have the article. 
and we have the article. They agree. This is masculine. This is masculine. They're both definite. They're both singular. One safer, one book, and this one is it's not a plural demonstrative, it's a singular, so they match in gender, number, and definiteness. Okay, we have ha ish, the man, he kacham. We had the same example last week when we were talking about adjectives. Adjectives. This one's got the article. How come we don't have a dog ash? Because the het is a guttural. All right, so it rejects the dog ash. Uh, but it's the man, the wise one. Okay, that's adjectives. Um, now we're going to look at, uh, well, okay, attributive adjectives. I should have just done it this way. And then this one, demonstrative. Um, Ha'ish, Haze, the man, the this one. So we just say this man. I'm going to look at these and we'll look at these more a little bit later. Uh, Aisha, ha chachama, Aisha, ha zot. Notice we went to zot, the feminine, because Isha is feminine. We still have the article. Uh, we can't have a dog ash in the olive because that's a guttural. So we get compensatory lengthening. We have uh, comets there instead of the um, patak. The same thing happened here. Um, so we have the woman, the wise one, or the wise woman. We have the, the woman, the this one, or just this woman. We have the men, the wise ones, and the men, the those ones. And so those men. And the women, the wise ones. Remember, we said that the adjective will always tell you the truth. This is feminine. Even though this looks like a masculine ending, this is an irregular uh, it's, it's the women, um, but the, the adjective always tells you the truth. It's the, it's a, that's the feminine plural. And here we have the women, the those, I mean these, the these, so these women. So looking at them, uh, let's go back to this previous one there. So what I just want to point out here before we go on to anything else is look at everything that's in common here. We have articles on all of these. Um, we do have the dog ash on the bottom one because the, this is not a guttural. All of, all of these are gutturals, so don't get the dog ash. Uh, this should probably have a, a talk maybe and because we don't have the, well, yeah, it works either way. And then over here we have articles. And over here, we have articles as well. So we're looking at, we're comparing apples to apples here, as it were. We're at, well, here too. I didn't uh, um, draw a line around it, but all of these are also articles. And so we're saying the man, the wise one, or the man, the this one. Okay, now we'll look at them more individually. <clears throat> the man, the wise one the man, the this one. So uh, we just say the wise man or uh, this man. And then we have the woman, the wise one, and the woman, the this one. And so we would just say the wise woman and this woman. We have the men, the wise ones, and the men, the these ones, uh, that we just say the wise men and these men. We have the women, the wise ones, the wise women. And we have uh, the men, uh, the women, the these, so just these women. So that's how that works. Notice that in all these cases, we've had the, the demonstrative follow the noun, we've had the adjective follow the noun. So it's attributive adjective. That's what we're looking at. Attributive adjectives will follow the nouns they modify. Uh, the woman, the wise one. Uh, demonstrative adjectives will follow the attributive adjectives and the, um, the um, demonstrative will follow also. 
So this be the woman, the wise one, the this one, this wise woman. Uh, I should say this. This wise woman. Sorry, got an error. I need to fix that. So demonstratives uh, can, can act as adjectives or they can act as pronouns, as we saw earlier. Uh, demonstrative pronouns are similar to predicate adjectives. Remember, predicate adjectives, we have to actually add is or are or am or some kind of to be verb uh, to whatever fits in English to, to indicate that this is predicate adjective. Predicate adjectives precede or follow the nouns they modify. They agree in gender number, but are never definite. Never definite. Demonstrative pronouns precede the nouns they modify and agree in gender number and are never definite. So whether it's a whether we're talking about adjectives or whether we're talking about demonstratives in the um as a pronoun, um, they they behave the same way. So we have the demonstrative first, ze, I'll say for this, we're gonna have to add is, this is the book. There is no article on this. It's not ha ze, it's just ze. Um, but we do have an article on safer, ha safer. Um, so they do not agree in definiteness, but it comes ahead of it. If it comes ahead of it, you know it's going to be a acting as a pronoun. Okay, we have hacham ha'ish. That's uh, this is wise. We looked at this last week. Same same illustration we had last week. We see the here. There's the article. So the man, why is the man? Well, we're saying the man is wise. The man is wise. When we go to the demonstrative pronouns, uh, ze comes first. It does not have the article in front of it. Just as wise did not have an article in front of it. But we do have an article on ish, the man. Uh, this, the man. Well, we have to supply is. This is the man. And then more coming up here. Okay. And this is kind of the same thing. Um, no article. Article, the woman. So the woman is wise. And this is the woman. Zot, this. I have uh, wise ones are the men, the men are wise, these are the men. The wise ones, or I mean just wise ones, the women, um, I might have said the here, but there's no article on any of these. And so these are all predicate. So we saw it, but is or are in here. So uh, the women, we do have an article here. The women are wise, wise ones. And these are the women. We have to add it to be verb. Notice that in every case, the demonstrative comes first, just as in this case, all the adjectives came first. And they, none of them agree in Definiteness. All the nouns have the article. None of the adjectives do. None of the demonstratives do. All of the nouns do have the article. Um, we just did this. Oh, okay. Well, this is the same thing as I did a little while ago. Okay, so the man is wise. I kind of already did this. We'll, we'll go ahead and do it again, though. This is the man. We have to add is because... It's coming ahead of the noun, and they mat they do not match indefiniteness. No article. Um, the woman is wise. This is the woman. Again, it comes first. 
ahead of the noun, ahead of the noun, no article, no article. These are the men. The men are wise. Again, it comes first. No article, no article, article, article on the nouns. And then uh, wise ones, the women, or the women are wise. And then uh, these are the women. We have to supply R to be verb to make it work right. That's how we can tell how it's being used. The far demonstrators look exactly like third person independent pronouns. So we have Aish, who, well, it's following, right? Uh, but it is not, it does not match. Here's an article. There's no article in front of uh, who. It's not ha who. So it's going to be he is the man. Um, and we, even though it follows it, it, you can have who in front of it, and we know it's he is the man. But if it happens to follow it, uh, then you look to see if they match indefiniteness, and they do not match indefiniteness. Um, so he is the man. Third person pronouns precede or follow the nouns they modify. They agree in gender number, but not definiteness. They are never definite. Demonstrative pronouns precede the verbs they modify and agree in gender number, but are never definite. So whether it's in front or behind, it's still, if it doesn't agree in definiteness, um, it's um, used as a pronoun. Um, well, that's not right. Use a predicate to be the predicate use. You have to supply the word, a to be verb. Uh, far demonstrative pronouns look like third person independent pronouns. So there's who, Haish, again, it's in front, but it does not have an article for the demonstrative. It does have the article on the noun. So he is the man, or this, I'm sorry, or this is the man. Never definite. No article, but they do match in gender and number. Okay, whether it's in front or behind. Okay, now we're going to move on to the relative pronoun. This one is pretty easy. There's only one relative pronoun. We have who, that, which. Um, there might even be more than that. Uh, those are probably the most common. Um, but in Hebrew, uh, we only have one. A relative pronoun introduces a relative clause that modifies a noun, and in Hebrew, it's asher, asher. Actually, there is, I said we only have one. Um, there is another, uh, it's a um, se, I believe, um, if I remember right. You mostly find it like in the Song, song of Songs or... Um, in um, some of the later writings, um, I think it only appears a few times in some of the earlier writings of the of the Old Testament. But anyway, it's appended onto the front of a word, and it does also mean that or who. Um, so I, I need to correct myself. When Asher is, Asher is certainly the most common one, and it's the most um, uh, ubiquitous. You see them way more. So... Uh, could be translated who or whom or that or which. So we have some examples here. We have Haish, Asher, Olek, um, the man who is walking. Um, who? So Asher is the relative pronoun. Another example. Ani, I, and we're going to, have to, it comes before the noun. Um, it's, uh, there's, whoops, there's no article here. Uh, I don't think you ever do, but it's going to be I am, I am Yahweh, who caused to go out you from Ur of the Chaldeans. Okay, so. 
who, again, Asher. And then we have Ha'isha, Asher, the woman who you gave. Uh, we haven't studied that yet, but you gave with uh, with me. But we have who, again, the woman who you gave. Asher. If the context refers to a person, use who or whom, as in, I am Yahweh who caused to go out, or you could say brought out you from Ur, the Chaldeans. If it's not talking about a person, use that or which. Uh, most of the time, the example here, Deuteronomy uh, 12, 1, these are the statutes and the ordinances, or it could be judgments and the judgments, which um, you all will keep to do in the land, which he is giving Yahweh. Again, we have the verb and then the subject, which Yahweh is giving. Oh, here we go. It's more Yahweh, the God of the fathers of you, is giving. Okay. Um, giving to you uh, for, um, no, no, to possess her all the days which you all, there's a Tim, that's plural, which you all living on um, the dirt, the ground, Adama, um, actually that should be all the way out there, Adama, the ground. So use that or which for Asher. Asher is going to be, all, all of these are found in this one word, Asher. Okay, so that's the relative pronoun. And then we want to look at the interrogatives. Uh, interrogatives being who, what. Pronouns used in questions, ma. Is what? If you think, uh, if you think of this as somebody's mother, especially maybe down in the south, ma. What ma? Ma is what? Me. Um, maybe the mother's getting after you. Who me? Me is who? Who me? Me is who? Uh, and there are more Hebrew interrogatives. Uh, these are probably the most common. Um, pronouns can be used in questions. So we have uh, lama is another one. This is for what, but it just means why. Uh, ache um, means how. And uh, a yay. Oh, here we go. There's why, how, where. Ache. My, my memory device for ache is when I was young, I could play hard or work out hard or something. And or, and um, I, I'd get, I'd wake up the next day, I'd be kind of sore, muscles would be tight or something. I have an ache and I knew exactly why, because I worked out hard or I played hard or something like that. But now that I've gotten older, I wake up and I hurt and I have no idea why. I said, ache? I have an ache? How, how did I have this ache? I didn't do anything. <laughs> So anyway, that's my memory device for how. Ache is how. Um, so these are other pronouns that are used in questions. Uh, Lama appears 178 times. Ache appears 61 times. And Aye is 52 times. Okay. Interrogative particle. We have an interrogative particle. Now, I believe in Spanish... If you were going to ask a question, you put the question mark at the beginning of the sentence. But I'm not, I don't know Spanish. I just, I've seen it. Uh, but in Hebrew, we're going to put the question mark at the beginning of the question. And it looks like this, ha. That's the interrogative particle. And you stick it onto the front of the word. Uh, so, shalach, he sent, amelech, the king, et, there's our, in Definite in, indirect object, or I'm sorry, direct object. Uh, definite direct object particle, and we sure enough it is definite because there is our 
article, uh, the prophet. So he sent the king. Again, we have verb, subject order. He sent. Who sent the king? The king sent the prophet. Okay. Now let's get rid of some of this. We're going to make an addition here. So if we want to turn it into a question, we add the interrogative particle attached to the beginning of a word. So now we have Ashalot. Did he send the king? Did the king send the prophet? Or you could even, if you don't want to say did, you could say just with the inflection of your voice. The king sent the prophet. By raising the voice at the uh, end of the sentence, it still asks a question. So how do you tell an article from the interrogative particle? Because they both kind of look a little bit alike. Both of them are haze. Both have, well, the article has a patak. The article also has a dagesh. But we have a reduced patak under the interrogative particle. Uh, there's the dagesh. For the, that's so that's those will be the ways the main ways of telling them apart now sometimes depending upon what the word starts with and you put the interrogative particle in front of it it can change the way it looks and on page 73 um, they give you the different ways it can look and sometimes it'd be harder to spot but it's um But, that, but they give you some good ways of uh, telling the difference. All right, we want to do some translation practice here quickly. We have our preposition here that means as or like. So we have devarim, ka, devarim, um, as words, the these, right? Uh, this is also not just a preposition, but it also contains, because of this patak, because of this dogish that contains an article, so according to the words of these, or according to these words. The demonstrative is following the noun. They're both definite. They match in um, gender number and, and definiteness. And so it's according to these things. Sometimes devarim will be things or according to these words. Okay. From Isaiah. <clears throat> Ani, I am Yahweh, the God of you. We'll be learning about phenomenal. That's a phenomenal suffix right there. And we'll learn about that God of you. So uh, I am your God. Uh, I has to be the subject. Ani has to be the subject. And it has to be, then have a to be verb. I am. Uh, the cough, as I said, is the pronominal suffix. We'll look at that next week. I am Yahweh, or the Lord, your God. From Joshua. Who, again, this comes first. There's no article. Uh, Eloheinu, that's the God of us. That's also a pronominal suffix. And so he has to be the subject, and we have to have a to-be verb because it's in front of the noun. Uh, and again, the new is a pronominal suffix. He is our God. He is the God of us. That's the God of us, the new at the end. Hello, hey, new is our God. He is the God of us. Psalm 118. This, we're going to add, is the day. See the article? No article here, though. They don't match. We have to add a verb, okay? This is the day he made, Yahweh. This is the day Yahweh made. Because the verb is, again, for the subject. Yahweh made this day, or this is the day Yahweh made. This is before the noun. We had to add it to be. The article is on the noun, the day. This is the day Yahweh made. Okay, Joshua 24, the signs, oat is sign, oat, oat is signs, the signs, agadalot, or agadalot, uh, the signs, the great ones, the these. Okay, we have the, we have the, we have the. Um, this is a noun, an adjective, and a demonstrative noun. 
adjective, demonstrative. All are definite, these great signs. And it's easy when you have these um, um, attributive adjective type setups here, uh, we say the signs, the great ones, the these, if you just read it backwards, like we do in English, uh, the these, the great, the great, the signs, these great signs, these great signs. Genesis 22, um, the haye and where, ase, the lamb, where is, and since this, since this comes first, we have an article here. We have no article here. We do have and, uh, and where is the lamb? And where is the lamb? This is uh, Isaac speaking. The interrogative is before the noun. We have to add a to be verb. Where is, and where is the lamb? All right, let's go over the vocabulary words. For chapter eight, pages 74 and 75. Some of these will be familiar because we've already talked about some. Um, so 8.12, page 74, personal pronouns. Anachnu, anachnu is we. Ani is I. Anohi is also I. Uh, notice that ani occurs more than more than twice the amount of times that uh, anach, uh, anohi appears. Ata, you. Atem is y'all. Who is he and he is she. Haim is they or Hema. And he mentions in the Pentateuch or the Torah. Pentateuch is the Greek word for the first five books of the Bible. Torah is the Hebrew word for the first five books of the Bible, the law. Okay, so those are personal pronouns. And those are the those are the ones you see a lot. You notice the numbers, uh, how many times it occurs um, listed there. Um, there are some that aren't seen very often, like the one we saw that was only occurs five times. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it if um, if you don't get that memorized. Um, you probably would have to look it up when you get to it anyway. So um, demonstratives, a lay is these uh, for both masculine and feminine. Uh, who is that, he is that, Haim is those, Zot is this, feminine, Ze is this, masculine. They don't list those that way, but that's, you might want to put a, like a an F by Zot and an M by Ze or something like that. Um, well, on who and he, it's the same way. Who is masculine? He is feminine. All right, so next page we have ha, the interrogative particle. Um, it occurs about 742 times. Um, well, there's there is a note on page 72 that says 140, or 748 times at a couple of different counts. I guess it depends on whether the question is whether it's an article or an interrogative particle. But most of the time you can tell. Lama, we talked about that, is why. Ma is what? What ma? Uh, Madua is why. And me is who? Who? Me? Acher is another or other. Um, Asher is who, that, or which, or whom. Key is because or that. And sometimes it's got a broader range than that. Sometimes it's if, sometimes it's but. Um, I start off with because. If that doesn't fit, I put that. If that doesn't fit, I'll go with if or something. Just have to go by context. And there's she. That's the one I was thinking of. She is a prefix relative pronoun. It still means who, which, or that. It appears 143 times, so you do need to learn it. 
but it'll be attached onto the front of a word just like the the for and or like the ha for the or the uh, the prepositions uh, the the k l uh, b prepositions. This is the same way. Say and when you see sh, it uh, is translated the same way as who or that or which. Any questions? Okay, just for fun, I mentioned this earlier about the video. It's um, kind of like Abbott and Costello's who's on first type of thing. It's uh, who is he and the, you know, it's two people playing off of each other on this and, and he is she and uh, that sort of thing. So I, I'll put that link in my email when I send out the link to this video from this lesson. So you'll have that. So homework, exercise eight in the workbook, um, memorize chapter eight vocabulary, and uh, learn those paradigms for the personal pronouns and the demonstratives. And then go ahead and read chapter nine, Hebrew pronominal suffixes. Any questions? Hey, I hear none, so we will be done.